Hey, what's up? Let's continue our discussion of sets. Let's talk about Venn diagrams. So Venn diagrams are a way to graphically look at sets. For us, let's talk about um, three different cases. So one case is if you have uh, A here, and then here you have B. Okay, this is B. And then in this rectangle, this rectangle is going to represent the universe of discourse or the universal set. That's everything uh, that we care about. So it's all the elements in question. And so A and B are always subsets of this rectangle. So they're inside the rectangle. And in this picture, what we see is that A and B, so AB, have no elements in common. So that's, that's, an, that's what this picture is telling us. So have no elements I'll put ELTS in common. So they have no elements in common. So that's one picture. Um, one way to say that is that they are disjoint sets. So two sets are disjoint if they have no elements in common. We'll come back to that uh, a little later. Another case um, that we can have is if we have, let's say we have A here, and then we have this bigger set around it, that's B. And again, we have our um, universal set here, U. In this case, it looks like every element in A is also in B. So in this picture, we're saying that A is a subset of B. right? So in the first picture, we're saying they have no elements in common. They're disjoint. In the second picture, we're saying that A is a subset of B. And the third picture is probably the most instructive. And this is the one that we typically use always. Okay. So here we have our universal set U, our rectangle is U, and then here we have A, and then here we have B. And this is just a generic picture. So um, here, um, with this picture, we can describe almost any, well, not maybe not the second one so well, right? But this is a really good picture to use. So we usually use this one, and I'll explain why. I'll explain why right away as we go through uh, some definitions. So we'll use this one when we're explaining uh, what follows. All right, let's talk about set operations now. And we'll use Venn diagrams to help us um, talk about these. So set operations. So one of the most basic uh, set operations is called a union. Okay, union. And so the notation we use is a U. So we say A union B is equal to the set of all X such that X is an element of A or X is an element of B. Now it's really important to understand um, this or. Or in mathematics is not like or in English, right? So like if you go to Burger King and they ask you if you want cheese on your Whopper, you usually just say yes or no. You can't say yes, no. <laughs> In, in mathematics, you can, right? So this means that x is in A, x is in B, or both. So this condition is satisfied if one of them, if the first condition is true, the second condition is true, or if both are true. So the Venn diagram for this uh, would look as follows. So here's, here's our universe of discourse. So here's U. Okay, and then here is uh, A. And then here is B. So if we wanted to sketch this, let me use a, a different color. So what would it look like? It would look like this yellow region here. So it's everything in A, everything in B, or everything in both. So, so you would shade everything in, in both sets completely. So that's union, and that would be the picture for union. So you see how this, this third picture here already has paid off in, in this case here. Let's look at... Another operation, this one's called intersection. So intersection. When you have two sets and you take the intersection, you write A, and it's like an upside down U. So A intersect B, or A intersection B. And this is the set of all X, such that X is an element of A, and X is an element of B. I just remembered something that I forgot to mention in even the first video. Um, instead of using a line here, you can use two dots. So you can say stuff like X such that, oops, <laughs> X such that 
x is an a and x is a b. So you can use two dots uh, instead of a line. I just forgot to mention that. And I just I just remembered. So pretty random. Anyways, what does this mean? X is an a and x is in b. This means that it has to be in both sets. It's what they have in common. So both for this statement to be true, both have to be true. Hence the use of the word and. Let's look at the picture here. Let's look at the Venn diagram. So here's our our universe of discourse, our universal set. And then here's A, and then here's B. So this is A and B. So it's what they have in common. So it's this little overlap. So I'm going to shade it again in yellow. So that would be the intersection, that little piece there. Uh, if A and B have nothing in common, uh, that means that this set should be empty. So we say that A and B are disjoint. We talked about that at the beginning. If a intersection B is equal to the empty set. So in this case, the appropriate picture to use, well, one, one decent picture to use uh, would be this one. This would be a better picture here maybe, right, in that case, right, because you could clearly see that they're disjoint. There's no overlap. All right, one more set operation. Um, we'll call this set minus. Actually, two more set operations. So A set minus B. Sometimes it's written A and people actually just literally write a minus sign like that. Uh, I prefer this notation. This is the set of all x such that x is an A and x is not in B. So it's not an element of B. So it's all the elements in A uh, that are not in B. Let's draw a picture uh, with our Venn diagram. So here's U. It's our universal discourse or our universal set. Here's A, and then here is B. So this is all of the elements in A that are not in B, right? So X is in A, but it's not in B. So we're going to shade just this stuff here. So we're not going not gonna to shade anything that's in B, just the stuff in A. And so we leave everything else not, not shaded, okay? One more operation. It's called the complement or absolute complement. I'll just call it complement. This is a complement. Some people use an a bar. That's fine, but the bar is totally overused, so I totally prefer the ac. Plus, it's easier to read. a complement, c for complement. This is the set of all x such that x is not an a. And if you like, you can, you can add this extra condition, and x is in the universe of discourse. This, this other condition does not really need to be said. It's understood, right? So this is understood, OK? Usually you see it in like set theory textbooks, but in actual like, you know, non-set theory math, <laughs> you, you don't have to mention this, right? It's not really something that people, it's understood. So let's draw a picture of um, what's going on. So here is our universal set. Here is A, and then here is B. And it's basically everything um, that's not an A. So we're actually going to shade everything. Oh, this is fun. We get to shade everything that's not in A. So everything that is not in A. So there's our beautiful shading. What a beautiful color. So we shaded everything that's not in A. It's called the absolute complement, right? absolute complement. All right, let's go ahead and do a uh, simple example of these set operations. It's not hard. Um, maybe in the videos that follow, I'll, I'll do more uh, examples. So let's see, we have A equals uh, the set 1, 2, 3, uh, 4. And then we have B. That's equal to um, 4, 5, 6, 7. 4, 5, 6, 7. And then um, that's good. I think that's good. Here, the universe of discourse is the set of natural numbers. right? So it'd be 1, 2. So in this case, maybe it's important to mention it. So we know what's going on. Uh, let's find the union. So A union B. This is everything that's in A, everything that's in B, or in both. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. That's from A. 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Now we'll go to B. 4. Well, we already wrote down 4. So we don't have to write it again. And then so 5, 6, 7. So 5, 6, 7. So that would be A union B. Let's look at A uh, intersection B. This is what they have in common, right? So it's everything that's in both sets. Well, it looks like 4 is the only number that they have in common. 
So A intersection B is going to be equal to 4. Right? That's the one number uh, that they have uh, in common. Let's look at A set minus B. This is all of the elements in A that are not in B. So I think it's just going to be 1, 2, 3, right? 1, 2, 3. These are the guys that are in A, but they're not in B. So this is going to be 1, 2, and 3. And last but not least, let's look at A complement. A complement is everything that's not in A. So A contains 1, 2, 3, 4. And here's where we really needed our universe of discourse, our universal set. So everything that's not in A, so it's all the other integers. So 5, 6, 7, etc. Right? Because A contains 1, 2, 3, 4. A complement is the rest of them. Right? It's the rest of the uh, integers. Let's finish this video by talking briefly about uh, power sets. Right? Power sets. So for any set A, so for any set A, so for any set A, we have P of A. So P of A, this is equal to uh, the set of all subsets of A. It's called the power set of A. This is called, this is called the power set. I love this name, power set of A. I believe it's two words. I, I wrote it as one word. I think it's two words, power set of A. Maybe you can use one word. I don't, I don't think it matters uh, too much. Um, let's look at an example. So A uh, is equal to, let's say, the set containing the numbers 1 and 2. Let's find the power set of A. So the power set of A is the set of all subsets. So let's list, first let's list the subsets. So we know that the empty set is always a subset of A. We also know that A is also a subset of A. Also, it looks like the set containing 1, that's a subset of A. And the set containing 2, that's also a subset of A. So all three, all four of these would be subsets of A, right? This is contained in A. Right? Every element in this set, in particular 1, is also in this set. So this set is a subset of A. 2 is also in A, so this set is a subset of A. This is the same, so it's a subset, and the empty set is also a subset. So the power set of A, in this case, the power set of A, it's the set, so notation is key, of all subsets. So the empty set, the set containing 1, 2, the set containing 1, and the set containing 2. And you can show that if A has n elements, where n is a positive integer, the power set, okay, the power set has 2 to the n elements. And that checks in this case. Here A has 2 elements, and the power set has 2 squared, which is 4 elements. So for example, if you had, say, um, A equals, um, let's say, uh, 1, 5, 7, here A has 3 elements. So the power set, I'll just say P set, has two to the three elements. And I believe I have uh, a video of this. I have a proof of this. I'll need to add it to the playlist. But I made one long ago. I proved that uh, if you have a set with n elements, um, it has two to the n subsets. In other words, the power set has uh, two uh, to the n um, elements. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching.